Welcome to the Friday Bean. Welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome. Hello, goodbye. You can scoot on. We should do an episode where we only whisper. We'll just call it the quiet, the, the quiet bean. It's hard to whisper for an hour. Those ASMR people do it. We'll get, um, we'll get our good mic out, get another one and just do them real close. Hello. <laughs> what are you guys doing? How are you doing? How are you doing? How, How are you doing? How's your Friday going so yeah, far? I cut the mustache. I had to. Had it to, was dying. Oh, he had to trim it, it a little bit. It was dying. I had to trim it. Yeah, I love how you said that, like you're acknowledging a comment. Someone about was going to say something. I figured I would just acknowledge before it happened. Oh, you get so he gets compliments everywhere we go. I do everywhere we especially, go, which is weird. I did not expect that. Especially older ladies, like no, yeah, especially younger ladies. Oh, you can yeah, it's mo it's mostly like like the like eighteen, nineteen year olds. Well, they think that you're rad. They do. They do. You're a cool dude. Good morning cool. from Greece. Good morning. Good morning. Um, guys, Twist. that's bad for it. That's why I had to cut it to begin with. Stop! Stop twisting your. <laughs> also, loving the uh, the trigon uh, image you got there for your profile pic. All right, guys. So today we're going to be going over 10 different ideas that you can use for your listing photos. Yes. We'll give it a few minutes for everybody to get online. I know that YouTube can be kind of weird. You guys have talked about not getting your notifications. Um, if you have not done so already, make sure that you sign up for one of the freebies that I have down below. Not only is that going to give you a freebie because freebie, uh, but it's also going to ensure that you get my emails on Fridays that will let you know about two hours before we go live. I think I send them at 10 a.m. Uh, and then we stream at noon. So 10 a.m. our time, 10 a.m. Eastern. So whatever 10 a.m. is to you. Um, so yeah, uh, that will ensure that you get the email notification. It gives you two hours to prepare. Yeah. Obviously, there are replays of all of our episodes of the Friday. Every week. single one of them. I know we always get emails from people yep. that are like, can you, can, can you, you please do a replay? Can you record this? A little pro tip. If you click the link that we sent you in YouTube to come to this video for the actual live stream, it works for the replay. Yeah, it's the same link. It's the same link. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you always have access. Unless this is the future and then it doesn't work like that. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm sure it's not going anywhere. The um, future. <laughs> so this year we're talking about actionable content. Um, I've been trying to work with you guys to help you to really optimize for the new year. Uh, last week we talked about Instagram reels, how you can make them very easily with Canva. Um, just a, a quick update on that while we're waiting for everybody to get online. We have had so many alphas. Are you okay over there? Yeah. Okay. No, I, I don't have any way to check how many people are in the stream. Oh, okay. So I always pull it up and there we is no one. Did you send an email? Yeah. I don't think she sent an email. Did you guys get an email? I did. I sent an email. Um, so <laughs> I guess we'll wait a minute. I guess we'll wait. But um, we did the episode last week on, on Reels, and tons of alphas have already seen insane success. We talked about doing the 30-day challenge, mm -hmm. 30 Reels, one Reel a day for 30 days. Um, you don't have to start that now. My intention for that was for you guys to start on February 1st, but some of you were like, no, let's, let's do this. And the alphas who have started, we've got an alpha who said that she has made a sale every single day from Instagram, just from posting her reels. Uh, we had one alpha say that she posted a reel and immediately made like four sales. Um, so reels are the way to go. And even last night, I for mine and Amber's podcast that we do, which it's a vampire romance podcast. Vampire romance. Yeah, content related. But I did a reel because I was uh, sent, I'm a, I'm a brand influencer from the publishing company. And they sent me this big PR package and there was like a challenge in it. You were supposed to pack because the, the store, the series, the characters are about to go to war in the last book and the last book comes out on February 1st. Um, and you're supposed to pack this little book bag that they send you with three things that you would take to this paranormal war. So I just, you know, did a bunch of little silly things. Um, but anyway, I posted the reel of that on our podcast's 
Instagram. And just since last night, it is up to 6,074 views just since last night. Lots of views, guys. You yeah. should be on uh you should be on there. We've also got um we've had over a hundred follows just since that reel posted. So guys, reels are insane. I've had a couple of you say that um I've been posting reels, I'm not getting any traction. I've also been seeing some of your reels because I follow most of you on Instagram. If uh if you follow me over at Starla K more, um, that's the account where I would be following you from. Puppers, will you stop? And um some of your reels, how do I say this nicely? They're not great. Some of your reels are great. So I'm not going to point out anybody in particular. Uh, but one thing that I've noticed and something that I, I want you guys to work on is many of you are just putting a static background up and then you're having one product fade onto the screen and then it just stays there for like a minute and nothing else happens and that's boring to me it's gotta be I'm, engaging yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna scroll right past that I'm, I'm not excited to see what happens next i'm just gonna assume that nothing's gonna happen next and i i move on from it um and if i'm not watching your reels then your customers probably aren't either so um just make sure that you're keeping things moving there's this uh there's this kind of rule of thumb with youtube at least where every 10 to 15 seconds something needs to be changing on the screen and yes. i actually practiced this uh with the video that i posted on tuesday hopefully you guys have watched that because there's content in that that that's nobody, a good video yeah nobody else has access to this data that i published in this video um but i did a lot of different effects i made sure that everything was moving um what is that Oh goodness, I can't remember. Pam just told me what it was, what the name of it was. The effect where while something is on screen, the screen is always just subtly zooming in. Oh, I don't remember what the effect is called. Uh, Pam, are you here? What's it called? I can't remember. Somebody will be here eventually. Somebody will know what it is. The very slow zoom. Um, it's a name. It's like um Yeah, I know there's a name to it. I just don't remember what it is. Okay. It's like a guy's name. But anyway, uh, the, you know, just little, little things, little effects, just keep things moving nonstop, keep things moving. Um, and that video that I did last night, granted it was for a, a podcast or not a podcast, but it was for a, a book series. Um, I kept things moving like every few seconds, every clip was only a few seconds long. It was constant motion, constant things on screen, uh, text and, and things like that. And every few seconds it changed. So just make sure that you're constantly popping new little things up on Ken, the screen. Ken Burns. Ken Burns effect. Yes. The Ken Burns effect. What? Bubbers is trying to get up on your lap. Parallax is a little different. Yes. Yeah. Somebody, somebody said uh, parallax. Yeah. Ken Burns. a little different. The Ken Burns effect basically means that, uh, you're either zooming very, very slowly, almost you can't even notice it unless you're really paying attention. It's not like a fast thing, but have you ever watched a video where you can just see the edge, like things are disappearing off the edge and you wouldn't even notice if you didn't stare at the edge of the frame? That's the Ken Burns effect. Uh, it's it's more of a psychological thing. And I think it gives it you- It really is. I do it every video that I edit, almost every scene has it going and it's so slow and not noticeable that you don't see that it's there until there is a transition into another and then section it zips and then back. it zips back out. You don't even notice it happening, but it forces the viewer to be constantly engaged. There's always something moving on the screen. I think psychologically, and this isn't backed by anything, I'm, I'm, I'm just assuming, but I assume it's, it's like when you're listening to someone and you're kind of leaning forward. You know, as you're getting more intrigued, you lean forward in your seat. And I think Sim that it it's gives simulating the effect yeah. of engagement. Yeah, I think that that's I think that that's what it does. So you'll see all the big YouTubers do it. Um, but if you do any type of video content, just Ken Burns effect, if you use uh, Premiere Pro. It was it's so fast. You can find a video. I think yeah. I watched literally a set a keyframe, set another keyframe yeah. and then set the zoom for the second keyframe to be like a right. percent. Like just a couple. I, I usually do five percent. But even if you're doing it with your phone and you're just recording, you can. Very I mean, it's so it's so slow that like you really can't yeah notice it. Like it's barely there. Can you pick this boy up? He wants to be on your lap. Come on. All right. So today he changed his mind. Today we're gonna go over ten different listing photo ideas. One of you asked a couple weeks ago. I can't remember who. But you asked if I had a video covering the ten different ideas to to fill your listing photos. Now, um. Keep in mind, as with everything that we do, that there are going to be exceptions. There is nothing that is harder as a YouTube coach, creator, 
Etsy coach than when I post a con like a video and someone's like, I sell digital downloads. This doesn't work for me. I'm like, okay, I can't make this work for everybody. Relax. But relax. I'm going to make it work for as many of you as I can. And I'm sorry if it doesn't. Um, but we can still talk about different ideas. I know that not all of you are going to be able to achieve the 10 photos, but 10 photos is important. And here's why. Every single photo that you have in your Etsy listings is an opportunity. So basically this customer, they don't have the ability to take your item, pick it up in their hands, turn it over. Uh, maybe it's, maybe it's, you know, smell it. If it's something scented, feel the texture of the product. If it's something soft, they don't have the ability to see how much it weighs. They don't have the ability to see how big it's going to be in their hands uh, or how it's going to look on their wall or how it's going to look when they wear it. They don't have the ability to do any of that. So we have to fill in those gaps for them. And for us, we already have this product. You know, we know this product so well because we made it. We're, we don't really care to post a million photos of it because we assume that everybody is going to know exactly what the photo or what the product looks like based on the photo that we post. Unfortunately, that's not the case. No matter how um, simple it seems, you need to take photos of your products at every single angle. Today, what we're going to do is a live demonstration where I'm going to take those photos right here live on the stream, and then we are going to pull them into Canva live. I'm going to edit them live, and I'm going to create listing photos with them live, and I'm going to do more than 10. Um, I feel that it would be better to give you more, and then you can kind of be able to navigate a little bit better and decide which ones are going to work for you if your products are bigger obviously i'm going to be working with a small product today i just grabbed a valentine's day fake succulent thing off my shelf because no mommy, easy I told you right now no right now look at all his pretty colors coming through on the camera i know he wants to snag my sweater um so that's what we're going to be doing today as with all of our other streams, this will move a lot faster if we save questions towards the end. So feel free to put them somewhere unless it's something urgent that has to do like with what I am doing in yep. that very moment. Um, try to save questions until the end. But let's go ahead and get started. We'll we'll start moving very quickly. A couple quickly. people have said that they're they're digital and they use all 10. Like Okay, great. Yeah. If you're uh, use the rest of the photos with examples and directions of how to download and advertising or more ideas on how they can use the download. Like, yeah, yeah absolutely. So it really is that easy. And, you know, Amber and I, works. Amber and I, the Elf Adapt shop that we have, by the way, do you guys know that we have Alpha merch like this shirt right here? I just, oh, uh, Amber, I just, re <laughs> <laughs> Amber, I just renewed all of the, um, you love it all of the expired listings. So we've got a lot of things back in stock now. Um, but we've got Alpha merch. Link is down below if you're interested in checking that out. We've got Friday Bean merch and we need to do the new Friday Bean logo on the merch. We Are you going to let me take photos? He just wants to touch. He just wants to need. He does. He wants to squish my, my soft sweater. Can I have my hand back? No, don't He snip. said I want to pull threads. Mom. No, no pulling threads on the new sweater. Ouch. They are at uh, Amber's here. She's in a hotel room. Yes, I saw. All right. I checked so, out the Alpha merch today. Actually, I think I need a candle. I think you need a candle, too. They're not super strong, but they smell very good. All right. <laughs> Let's go ahead and... A I'll single see. paw. Yes, he is a lover. Let me figure out how I want to do this. So that they can see what I'm doing. He's thinking the same thing. No. Let's see how I can do this. How can I do this? Let's see. He is so sweet. He's a lover. Here, I will scoot out of the way. And bubbers, bubbers can watch. So a couple quick ideas for those who have small products. And if you have large products, you can actually get these as well. Um, so larger products, I recommend getting on Amazon, getting cheap photography backdrops if you don't have a good yes. place to take your photos. You can unroll them. Uh, you can get all different textures, wood floors. Um, and, and ash wood and really nice colors that complement, you know, um, Etsy really well. You can get that nice, pristine aesthetic without having to actually go somewhere for a photo shoot. And then you just roll it back up and put it away. But if you have a small product, we can go even cheaper. You can go to the craft store and get some scrapbook paper. Uh, I have wood floor. I have, let's see. This one's just black. 
I have some some light brick. I have marble. Ooh, oh, dropped it. I know. Ooh. And let's see what else. I got some glitter. This is good for like snow if you want to do like a fake snow effect. And then a dark brown wood. Um, so I'll let you guys choose actually. What yeah, color what, what color do you guys want us to use for these pictures? Yeah, for this little red thing, we can do let's stick with the light. We can either do marble, brick, or the kind of white barn wood, like chipped paint. Yeah, we'll keep it light because I know light backgrounds are kind of the hardest to edit on, so. So let us know. Marble, white wood, or brick. The bricks, the brick, marble. Marble, brick, 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 brick. 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 I have a feeling brick is going to be the winner. Brick, brick. I like the wood. Okay. Marble or dark wood, brick, brick. barn wood. What do you think? Brick is, the brick brick is, is still winning. Brick reminds me of bathroom tile. Marble, white wood, marble, brick. Brick, brick. brick. All right, let's do brick. Yeah, screw it. Do the brick. All right, we'll do brick. Okay. So I'm just going to set this here. You hold that, Bob. You hold that for me. I'm going to put this here. <laughs> now I'm going to find out where I buried my phone. Now, normally when I'm doing my product photo shoots, I use my, um, for small products, I use the Nikon Coolpix L820. Um, apparently that one finally has retired. There is an upgraded version of it though. Yeah. Um, I don't use my DSLR for my product photos. No, no, it's too detailed. It Well, it's not that it's too detailed. It's just not necessary. It doesn't give me any additional details that the Nikon Coolpix L820 would. Well, the more detail that you have in an image as well, the more you have to edit it down to like show off features properly. Like right. there's a, like more colors and things to edit. Like, All right. So we're going to take a picture. First one I'm going to do is just the product head on. Head on. So there's one. And we'll, we'll apply directly to the forehead. We'll count these together when I actually put them up on the screen. We'll do one top down. So there's two. We'll do a close up. There's three. We'll do in my hand. Four. The size. size reference. Let's see. Uh, do we have a coin sitting around? Anywhere? Nope. Coin. Nope. Um, trying to think of an item that. Let's see. Something. Something that everybody scissors. knows. No, because scissors can vary in size. A lighter. A lighter. Yeah, grab a lighter. There's one over. There's one over next to my computer. The purple one. No, that that feels trashy. Like <laughs> that feels like, trashy. Yeah, yeah. They said guitar pick. My, <laughs> oh, Deb got beat me to it. I was gonna say banana for scale. We can do a guitar pick. Not everybody knows how guitar picks are, but sure. Here's one. Are you serious? Do any of you not know how big a guitar pick is? Even well, considering don't... I have like 15 different sizes of guitar picks sitting on my desk, no, they probably don't. I would recommend a coin. I would recommend a coin. A quarter. Yeah. Yeah. Even if you're not in a country where quarters are standard, you probably know how big they are. Okay. Sorry, but your cat is cute. That's nothing to apologize about. This honking boy is cute. We know. All right. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. He chunky. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. It's wintertime. He gets fat in winter. What are you doing? I what are you doing? You got another idea. I got another idea. Your glasses would make it look like a staged desk photo. That's true. Let's see. Now I have a cool idea because this is kind of gross. This ruler is kind of gross, but I have a I have a cool idea with it. In fact, we'll do it by inches. So I'm laying the the ruler next to it, right? About even with the end. Should do it with centimeters so it sounds bigger. Was that, a, was that, that was a, a joke, yeah. Was that a dirty joke? Yes, that, that, was, that was an adult joke, yeah. Very very good, Mr. Moore. Very uh -huh. good. Very creative. Everybody give Mr. Moore an A-plus in the comments for creativity. You may fail the class, but 
Anyone okay. use backdrops they purchased on Amazon? Care to share the Amazon shop name? Go for it. Yeah. What kind of gamer chair do you recommend? I'm trying to find a used one that's affordable. TBH anymore with my back. I can't do gamer chairs. DX Racer makes some of the best ones out there. Um, Omega, I think, is the chair that I have back there. I can't remember. No, Secret Lab. Secret Lab is the one that I did most recently. I like their fabric chairs. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is take a couple of these pieces of paper. I switched to the, I got myself an Aeron and I can't, I can't go back. And I'm going to do this. See, look at this. Look how, look at that fold. look how, look how aesthetic this is, guys. How aesthetically pleasing. He's, no. he's trying to grab it. No, him no grab. He's whipping his tail like crazy. Be angry. Yeah, Secret Lab chairs. She said, awesome, thank you. Um, Secret Lab has the fabric ones that I really like. I'm not a big fan of the leather, especially if you're prone to acne on your back or bottom. They will make it worse. It's true. You will get butt pimples. Okay. I think I've got a pretty good assortment here. Of, I'm trying to do, like, some lifestyle things. I will say, not just gamer chairs. If you're going to buy a chair, make sure you actually look at the sizes. Most companies usually offer different sizes for chairs. If you get the wrong size, you're going to end up in pain. Look up guides on how to find the correct chair for you. There's plenty of videos on YouTube that will show you how to. All right. We can always take more. If we yes. Can. We'll yes, go yes, ahead yes, and yes. scoot this back here for Same. now. I'm looking for fabric. Yeah, fabric is where it's at. Okay. Absolutely. And if you can get mesh, a good mesh chair, these are going to be out of most people's budgets. But if you can get an Aeron... It, it worth it. You'll be a little cold though. <laughs> All right. So now I'm going to take these photos into Canva. Remember, we've been talking about Canva for our last few streams. I've got tons of videos on Canva. Um, it they have templates that you can use. They have great fonts. Um, I have Canva Pro. I love it. You can use it for your marketing, but you can totally get away with the free version for what we're going to do today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys up here in just a few minutes, but I've got my Canva template already ready to go. I'm going to go into the plus button and then I'm going to go and I'm going to upload my photos that I just took. Now, one thing that I don't like is that you can't select multiple you have to do them one by one and it's a big pain in the butt. So. Really? Yeah. So there's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and I might not use all of these. 13. Canva Pro is a great tool. Yes, it is. It's just one of our favorite tools. We use it 14. pretty much every day. I do use it every day. I use it multiple times a day for multiple different uh, accounts. Okay. All right. We can um, go ahead and let me refresh this so my uploads go through. And we can go ahead and uh, share screen. Mm -hmm. Screen share. Okay. We I'll, do, uh, I'll do no face for this one. Yeah. That way they can see what you're doing up in the top right. Okay. So I've already got my listing photo template in here. So it was here. We're going to go into our uploads. And here are the photos that I just took. And let's see. What one do I want to do as our main listing photo? Mr. Mm -hmm. Which one? Let's uh let's go ahead and just do all of them and then we'll decide on main afterwards. Sure. So I'll go ahead and drag this one on screen. We might not end up using all of these, but you know. Oh, that turned out really blurry. That's okay. The ruler did at least. Amber really hates how we say ruler. Ruler? Ruler. How does she say it? Ruler. Ruler? No, that's how we say it, apparently. Well, how does she say it? R ruler. <laughs> so without the letters that are in the word. <laughs> we love you, Amber. Can't even pronounce her own name right. I don't know. Amber. 
and Lucy. Hold on. Okay. What? Report the spammer. Okay. Yeah. So we have a couple different photos here. Um, honestly, our lighting is so good that I don't even think that we would need to do any brightening on these images, though Canva does have some brightening tools. I'll be honest, I much prefer iPicky's brightening tools. I feel like Canva just... It's just a contrast, like or not a contrast, but a gamma. It's like a, just a gamma slider. Like it just, it gets so, so bright. So let's go ahead and get this back to zero. There you go. Okay. I would just bring the contrast down a little bit. I don't know. I think that the contrast is all right. If we bring it down, then it's going to stop. is what I meant. Just no. Way too much. I meant like three or four. Because the picture is bright enough, it's just the white balance is off. There you go. All right, so there's one. Actually, you know, let's um, let's delete this photo out of here, add it in manually, and flip it this way. Oof, that background though. And then we'll. There we go. I'm not even at all. <laughs> there we go. Look at that. Look at that. What? You scroll down to center an image, even though the image isn't in the center of your screen. Why do you do that? That's so weird. Because I have to. Yes. Do you always like to annoy your partners by doing things not the way that they want you to? <laughs> All right. So we've got a couple different options here for our listing photos. Let's go ahead and uh, flip this one. Now, a couple other things that I wanted to do. I had some ideas. Can you go in and type in ruler? Thank you. This inches? No, that's centimeters. I so need it sounds good. I need one in also inches. What I was hoping to do. The wood one. That's one I had. No, the other wood one. Which one? Bottom of the screen. This one? That one. What I was hoping to do was add in my own ruler, but match it up with the size of my icky one. Ah, gotcha. That way I've got one that looks really, really nice, even though, you know, you know, it's not necessarily the one on the screen. So let's see. Well, we first of all you need to make it even with the other rule. Well yeah, well. I'm not I'm not I haven't done it yet. I'm still working. So we've got our inches right about here. Need to be bigger. Yes. Right here. Where's the friggin' ruler at? Behind you. And now it's oh, behind no. you. I need to see which lines are actually the inch line. I can hardly see. So the outer edge is the inch line. Okay. You match it up. Yes. Here's your inch. Isn't this fun, guys? Isn't it fun when you're we... Almost, you're almost spot on there. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Go ahead and we have it. Mm -hmm. All right. So what I'm going to now do is I'm going to remove the background of this photo and get rid of everything else. And this is cool because you have the ability to kind of cut. <laughs> it's okay. We just need to. What are you trying to do? Oh, I, 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 I know what I've done. <laughs> Can we, um, I need to duplicate this photo. So what I need to do is I need to go back in. I need to grab it again. I need to line it up just perfectly. Oh my God, honey. 
line it up just perfectly. There we go. Fine. It's fine, babe. I got this. And then... Oh. Like a video game in the 90s where they put the 2D images on top of on top of the 3D world. Look. You, you still got a double line at the bottom. Look. Here's the thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go in now and go into photos and give me um white brick. Man, I was hoping that it wouldn't cut over that far. I shouldn't have put it so close. Yeah, Let's go into edit image again, background remover again. It's okay. We can figure everything out. Everything is figure outable. And it did not remove what you wanted it to remove. And then we'll go in. That should be good. You Ooh. cut you cut the Let's just pretend. So this doesn't take too up too long. Whoa! Why did I do in the hat? Stop it! What me. in the world did you just do? I didn't do anything. Okay, there we go. We did it. Now I'm going to group these together so that no matter what, they stay the same size when I change their sizes, and I'm going to rotate them around. Check that out. And you know what else I'm going to do? I'm going to go in and I'm going to ungroup them. I'm going to click edit and I'm going to add a little shadow. Let's see. Let's blur that sucker. Why is there a thing up here? <laughs> it's shadow. It's shadow that you didn't see. Ah. Whatever. Let's just pretend it's not there. No. <laughs> what no. did it just do? Don't know. Stop it. Okay. You remember uh, when we said that sometimes technology happens? Sometimes, sometimes technology happens. There we go. Slow down. Mark's evil down. <laughs> It do be evil sometimes. All right. Again, I'm going to go into uploads. I'm just going to go ahead and delete this one out. And I'm going to grab one of the photos that I took. Um, I'll do this one. I'm going to edit, erase my background. Wow. Looky there. Wow. Now, if you guys saw this in a listing, just because I've got my hand there, wouldn't it, it would give you a, ooh, that's not the same one. It would give you a decent idea of the size of the product, right? Um, Mark, can you see how you would add writing on a photo? How you would add writing on a photo? Yeah, you just go, you go over, add, add text, add the kind of text you want, edit it up. How many inches does this look like? Uh. What do you think? From bottom oh, to top. From, from bottom to top? Yeah. It's got the longest angle. Yeah. Five and three quarters, 5.75. At the angle it's at, at least. Okay. That's good enough. All right. So you can add your text. We'll use, we'll use this font. We'll pretend this is our branding font. And then anything you could want to edit about it is at the top. Yeah, you can uh, do different effects. You can make it like glow. You can add a little bit of uh, shadow to it. That way they know the size. What? I honestly, you know, I kind of like our, our mock-up ones better though i do like the shadow 
So, I mean, I've kind of... really do need a banana for scale, though. I, do, I think that we've given you guys some really good ideas for how to um, both achieve a photography background. Because, I mean, obviously this isn't optimal. Um, <laughs> the lighting isn't the greatest. I'm kind of working with some uh, scrapbook paper that I happen to already have. So, it's not in the best shape. But these photos are, they're passable, wouldn't you guys say? And these photos I think are even better, especially if you uh, have that Canva Pro background remover tool. Uh huh. So let's go ahead and... It's all about just being creative with what you've got. Like, yeah, absolutely. Even, the, even the like lowest quality edited picture on a somewhat decent background is gonna be better than a picture you took on a blanket in your bedroom, you know? Could you go oh. look up um, maybe like bathroom or sink or bathroom sink. I'm trying to think of like a counter or like a bookshelf, but it needs to be like perfect horizon for it. He's tearing up the curtains, by the way. Excuse me, sir. Oh, he's stuck. He's oh, stuck. he's stuck in the curtains. Oh. <laughs> oh, what did? Here we go. Let's see if we can make one of our photos fit into this little scene. Blow it up a little bit. Are you smooching the cat over there? Yeah, I gave him a smooch. He's mad, so I smooched him. Mr. Moore tries to be all big and tough, and then he smooches his cat. Mm, I do. I give him a smooch. Give him a smooch. Only because he's mad at me and he doesn't like it. Let's see. I think this one might be a good fit, actually. Let's uh, edit. Edit. Background remove. He's just being a nuisance because we're talking and not involving him. We can kind of add it on the counter. I would probably, if this was me actually creating a listing photo, I would spend a lot more time trying to find a, a sink that looks better or a counter. <laughs> yeah, because that looks pretty bad. Oh, fine. That's fine. They we get can, they're we're pretending. Okay, it's you're make, it's make believe. I know it's the lighting that makes the difference. If the lighting in that because the lighting in that room is just like perfect, <laughs> and the lighting was like subpar, so the colors just don't match. Yeah, we can kind of brightness is not the tool you needed there. There you go. Voile. Wait, wait! I have an idea. It looks like a tomato. It, it does look like a tomato. It does. Shadow. Oh, snap. Look there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Pull it back a lot. Oh, yeah, there you go. Well, yeah. Oh, look at that. Now it looks like it was made to be there. Yeah. I mean, the shadow's going down into the sink, too, somehow, but... Like the like there's a light behind it. Why you gotta ruin everything? There you go. That's better. What do you think, guys? Is that passable? Is that a passable photo? Yes. All right. So different photo ideas for your listings. Um, there are many, many things that you can do for your listings, depending on what you sell. Obviously, the size of your product is going to you know, be a contributing factor. I've given you a couple ideas, but the main 10 photos that I recommend, number one is a clear shot of your product just sitting in its most natural state. If I were to look through all of these photos, I would say that either this one or this one would likely be the one that I would choose for that uh, Is there listing. A transform option to kind of land it a little bit more. You mean like an actual manipulate where you can manipulate the like the borders of the object? Um not I in don't think so. No, not in Canva, unfortunately. You would need to take it. I believe in iPicky there might be. You might be able to. I would say that if I were doing a listing photo, this would probably be the one that I would use as my thumbnail because you can see that it's a heart. You can see that it's a succulent shaped planner. Um, so if I go back into my commonly used, don't mind the beer. <laughs> Let's see. And then we will add in a little bit of this nice drop shadow at an angle. We'll change the... Oh, that's not correct. I didn't want angle. I want offset. Blur it. Okay. 
maybe in the crop or rotate options, maybe? No. Crop is going to take you directly into crop. Rotate is only going to rotate it. Yeah, I don't I don't think there's any manipulate no. options in here. So if I were doing a listing photo, this would be my number one. This would be the first photo in my listing. Number two would be a similar photo, but at an angle. I would want to show them basically the exact same product, just a different view of that product. So maybe this one I think would be a good one. I'm really digging these these kind of faux backgrounds rather than the ones that I shot. I think that these look nice, especially with the added in shadow. I think that they look okay. So I will grab, I think this one's nice. Go ahead and remove our background again. Our size here. Go. And you know, this is also an opportunity for us to add in some added benefits of this product. So don't don't be afraid to add a little bit of text. I'm gonna put um never dies. <laughs> because if I was selling it never this, dies. It never dies. If I was selling this succulent, I want to highlight the fact that you you never have to worry about killing it. It never dies. Unless you want to. Unless you want it to. It never dies, yeah. Um, YOLO. 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 Let's add in our shadow again. To blur it out a little bit. There we go. Oh, why does it do that? That's one thing I will say about Canva is a lot of the effects, especially, I can't even do the effects in my on my upstairs computer because it's so old but sometimes might they might be a driver compatibility issue yeah sometimes they just they just mess up if you guys ever have issues with that you're not alone okay see well you guys got the point i've tried to add that shadow three times it just doesn't want to add right now so we've got our top down as our main we've got a side view with a little benefit it never dies I might be a little bit more, um, I don't know. I might describe that a little better in an actual listing. We have one of the product in my hand. Most people are going to know how big a hand is. This is what I call an imprecise unit of measure. A hand, a coin, a guitar pick are all imprecise units of measure. Um, and then we have a more precise unit of measure. We have it next to a ruler. So we know around how big it is. So that's one, two, three, four. Five, our fifth one is this kind of lifestyle photo. Notice that we've kept with a consistent palette though with our background colors. We still have this whitish color. And then our bathroom, I made sure to select one that had a similar color. Um, I want to make sure that everything that I add into this photo is going to have a similar aesthetic to it. So we have five. We need six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So let's go in and grab, let's see. Photos did we get? I feel like we could do some more fun lifestyle. Let's do. Um, can you give me shelf? Ooh. Trying to decide what I like. I like this shelf because it gives me the option to customize my own background a little bit. What if I did the shelf and then I did my planter? I'll do this one kind of at this angle. All right. And then we can also go into our photos and get our brick wall that we've been using. Well, that shelf already comes with a shadow. It does. I didn't even notice that. And then we can go into our elements and get our shadow again. Excuse me. Goodness me. Put it backwards 
right? So I would fade that a little bit. It's a little harsh for the, the, the shadow. Yeah, for the brightness of the image, it's a little harsh. What about here? Yeah, should be fine. Okay. And then let's do, um, can you type in candle? Yeah, let's see what we can find. I was hoping for one that didn't have a background. See if we can isolate this. I would be happy to have this whole like little scene isolated actually, because it kind of reminds me of something you would have on a bath a bathroom shelf. Like with the lavender and everything. My mom would still find a way to kill a fake plant. Yeah, she probably would too. Oh, absolutely. That looks nice. That's that's pretty. And then That works. I like the red because it's like a pop of color. If we oh. could just keep everything on here, um, keep it white. And then, I don't know. Um, let's, let's not do the, the heart in the middle of the shadow. Offset it to one side. I would offset it to the right just a little bit. That way the light from the candles is... Like over here or over here? Give me the plus. You do it. Just don't set it on the middle. Oh. Light light is never coming from directly above. I got you. I get, I see where you're using your noodle. Give it just a well, I guess no. that's right. <laughs> you know what I'm doing? You know what you doing? Let's give it a little zoom. What do you guys think? What else should go on the books? Someone said books. So we'll do um Book pile. Book pile. Let's do um Remember, kids, always keep your books on the same shelf as a lit candle. Oh, absolutely. That's. This actually looks kind of nice. Yeah, I would. I like if I were doing this for myself, I would go in, do some like longer like color editing and trying to do the shadows a little more specific, I guess. Yeah, I would spend a lot more time on the shadows, but I've muted the books a little bit. That way they're not outshining. So we've got some ideas here. Now, what I want to do is I want to also create some images that tell a little bit more about my product. And I think that this is where a lot of people, um, they, they assume that it needs to be 10 photos of just their product. That's not the case. So we've already got six, right? Six. Mm -hmm. So what I want to do now is create some photos that are going to talk about my product, but more things that our customers need to know about the product before they make the purchase. I always say that customers are never going to read your product descriptions. You want to make sure that anything that they need to know before they buy is in the product photos. So what I want to do is I'm going to duplicate this page. I'll go ahead and I will get rid of the books. And let's just... uh. We'll shrink this down a little bit, put it down here. And then we can, let's see, I might even take this background it's very slightly faded out. Make sure that the color behind it is white. Makes font a little easier to see. Let's add some text. Um, let's do, if you guys have an email list, you can do get, I don't know, 20% off right now. So we want them to join our email list. Where is the mouse? There it is. For those of you who's, or, for those of you who are new here, I'm working on a screen that is huge, but it's all the way across the room. <laughs> all right, get 20% off right now. Do and, it. And then I can say, type this link into your browser for automatic. Discount code. And you guys can do this through MailChimp.com. Um, I only teach MailChimp to Handmade Alpha Academy students just because there are a lot of legalities that come with email list building, things like the Can Spam Act and GDPR. 
uh, but an automatic discount code. They're not that hard to set up. There are MailChimp videos from MailChimp directly. So can you just put like www.eepurl.com? Big booty boys dot v dot VIP slash discount. Sure. Sounds good to me, Mr. Moore. All right, apparently that's where you can get your discount code is Big Booty Boys VIP. Don't go to that link. <laughs> Please don't go to that link. I I don't know what you'll find there, but it won't probably be. nothing. I don't think dot VIP is a Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and replicate this again. Maybe we'll change it up a little bit. Maybe we'll, uh, maybe we'll move it over here. <laughs> we'll move it over here. Let's, um, I don't know. What else did we have on here? We had the books. Let's go back in and we'll grab our books again. I think they were in photos. <laughs> that sounds like a virus link for sure. Oh yeah. Yeah. It sounds like something you should definitely click on. From an email you get on your work computer at work. Uh, no. How about we don't do that? And how about you not give such terrible, terrible advice? Always open shady links at work, not at home. Uh, I mean, at least the virus would be like, you know. Yeah. I mean, you'll get fired, but at least you won't have a virus on your computer at home. You're right. You're right. Fun facts from Mark. Um, so can you type in shipping information or shipping times? Um, and get, we'll delete this one. Do, uh, all order ship in two, two, three business days. Uh, free U S shipping and comes gift wrapped. Typing in this angle is weird. <laughs> All right. I wouldn't say comes gift wrapped. I would say like free gift wrapping or something like that. Yeah, free gift wrapping because gift wrap that is a paid option. Free gift, free gift wrap, free gift wrapping. All right, OCD. Re 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 U.S. shipping. Where's my attendees? All right, let's go. That was not. It was actually. It was exactly what I wanted to do. I don't know why I'm I'm over like black font. I haven't even been using Dude, it. Gray is where it's at. I've been using this like screw black font. Yeah, I've been using this nice subtle gray font on everything, and it's just so much more aesthetically pleasing. Got the aesthetic. It does have the aesthetic. Um all right, how many how many are we up to? I have no idea. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's do we could do uh I'm pulling my phone back out because I've got them all on my phone and I haven't been using it. I've been going from memory. Let's see what it becomes, else. Sec it becomes second nature. It was bad enough when I was researching lucky horseshoes at work, things that should never have been listing pictures on Etsy were shown, just saying. Yeah. All right. I used to I used to scroll through Reddit on my government computer and sometimes things weren't Perfect. tagged with the tags they should be tagged with. The house plant that never dies. So in this one, what I'm gonna do is talk about the benefits. If you sell planners, do one that says um Never, you know, never become disorganized again. Uh, if you used recycled materials, you could put something about that. Exactly. If you have a variety of sizes, talk about how, you know, inclusive sizing sizes up to, you know, from extra small to 5X. Uh, I'm trying to think of other things that I've seen sellers do. Um, if you offer a variety of colors, if I had this succulent planner in pink and red and blue, I could have all of those listed as If better. you're selling a very, and I know you'll know what I'm talking about, if you sell a very American kind of product, putting made in America helps. The perfect gift. If you gift don't, for... putting made in America doesn't do anything. Oh. 
I've would... got my screen brightness set to blaring and the gray is just a smoky smudge. Yeah, that's actually something, maybe I should do a video on that. How to properly like calibrate your screen brightness and stuff because it makes a huge difference in color and editing. Like most computer monitors come like nightmarishly bright and you need your brightness at like 30% on those computer monitors. Maybe I could do a little demonstration on how to how to set that up. Sure. Also how to do color calibrate with a uh, Adobe profiles and stuff. It's not even you know. Sure. All right, so we have one that kind of lists our benefits. This is talking like the benefit of this is that it's a fake succulent, so it's great for people who can't keep real succulents alive, like me. Um, we've got shipping times. We have information on our discount code. We have our several units of measure. I completely forgot about the guitar pick, so we can go ahead and toss that one into the mix. Let's just, uh, just duplicate this page. Add in the one with the guitar pick. Background remover. You could store handmaids. I, uh, I'm generalizing. It's not necessarily the same with all computer monitors. It depends on the brightness of the room, whether you have the sun or lights behind you or in front of you. There's there's a lot of different factors that go into it. It would take me a little while to put a video like that together. Okay. What are we up to now? We've got that one, put us two, at 10, right? three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, and then obviously we also have the options for our listing videos. Um, so a, a quick thing that I recommend here, you know what? You can switch it to us. Switch it to us. Switch it to us. Switch it to us. It's for the main faith here. Listing videos. We'll go ahead and just do like a quick, you know. Do it. Photos, because they give you slots to do it. Anything that Etsy recommends that you do, if they you give you if they give you something to fill out, fill it out. Always fill it out, especially when especially when it comes to your storefront. I I critique your guys' shops all the time, and I see how many of you that don't have your about sections and things filled out. Etsy looks at that stuff. They want to see shops that are complete. Now, having more listing photos isn't going to increase the odds that you make sales. It is not going to. Um, it's not one of the optimization factors that are going to contribute to your SEO. However, um, every single listing photo is an opportunity to turn your potential buyer into a buyer. You are basically showing them every single possible angle, every single possible feature that your product has. If I click on a listing and there's only one listing photo, I usually don't purchase that product personally just because I can't see what it is unless it is something that it's is... Mean, it's Everybody's got different reasons for it. Like for me, it's an effort thing. Like you're you're being given the opportunity to showcase your product and say things about your shop and you're not taking the time to do it. Mm -hmm. Like it's laziness to me. And it's fine if you can't think of stuff, like do it over time or whatever. But for it, me in particular, it's, I won't I won't not buy if a shop doesn't use all 10. But if it's just one or two pictures, I usually just ignore it because it's not worth the time. All right. If you want to go ahead and. Uh... I don't. No I took this a little too close up. Did you? Yeah. So That's I took okay. I took a listing video here. Um, just a video of the product sitting on the table. Did you just put a video on top of a video? No. It'll replace it. Okay. Just kind of turning it around. You don't need to do anything crazy with your listing videos. They only take a few seconds to do. If you're able to get some good lighting, if you're able to make it look really nice, then you can do that. But if you're not able to, then don't worry about it. Having it is better than not having it. So if I had more time, let's go ahead and give it, put it back to us. Okay. If I had the time to do it, what I would do is I would go back in to the, the back room of the basement and get my lazy Susan out. Lazy uh, Susan. My lazy Susan. And I would put my lazy Susan on the table. And then I would take my really pretty, my brick, and I would put it on my brick. 
all of this on top of the Lazy Susan, and then I would nice and slowly rotate the Lazy Susan with my camera directly over top of it, and I would have Mark hold the camera, and I would spin it nice and slow. Spin it slow. Okay, if you have the funds for it, they sell the Lazy Susans if you're by yourself that have the, you just flip them on, them, and they, you can set the speed for how fast yeah. you want it to spin. And They're expensive. They're, that's, that's, a, that's at a business expense there, but... Um, you can also find them from, if you want to get a used one, they have them on eBay. Mm -hmm. I believe that if you search uh, rotating jewelry display, rotating watch display, and things like that, you can usually find them for pretty cheap. I was looking into it a couple years ago, I remember. Yeah, I did too. So that was 10 different ideas. Now, I have a list that I wrote out that I'm just going to recite to you. Uh, I wanted to give you guys some like visual examples. I wanted you to see me doing it and, and kind of struggling with it as well. Because, you know, it, it's one of those things where everybody has has to take time and really think about it. There's no perfect template for it, but you have to decide what's going to be most important for you, for your products, and the information that your customers need to know about your product. If I was selling this fuzzy sweater, I would make sure that I have a photo really, really close up so that my customers could see the texture of it. I would make sure that I had it on a variety of models. I would make sure that if it comes in different colors, I would show them all of the colors. I would have a sizing chart. So the ideas that I have for you, I've got 14 different ones. Number one, your whole product. So for me, it was the top down of the product. That way you could see that it was a heart shape. If I would have done it from the side, they might not have been able to see. One of you guys said it looked like a tomato, which, you know, that's that's true. It, they might think it's a tomato. So heart shaped. Uh, next thing is a close up. You want to get a nice close up of your product, no matter what it is. Oh. That way they can see the texture, the details of it um, at an angle. So that would be where I would post the one where it's kind of at its side so you can see what it would look like from the side, uh, from the back. That might be one if you sell jewelry that you want to consider. People might want to know what the bottom of it looks like. That way if it gets flipped over while they're wearing it, they know what it's going to look mm -hmm. like. A top down. That would be one where it is just straight over top of the product. For this one, I had to do a top down. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to tell what it is. But if you're selling something like, for example, a, a candle, maybe do a top down. That way they can kind of see the jar um, in use. So that would be, for example, the photo where I had this sitting on the bathroom counter. That's a place where you could put it. Uh, if it's a candle, you can do a photo of it lit or being lit. Um, if it's, you know, like I said, a sweater, you could have someone wearing it. If earrings, you could have somebody with the earrings in. If it's a necklace, someone wearing it. Uh, in a scene. So I did the bookshelf with the candles and the book sitting on, on the shelf and the, the planner sitting on that shelf in your hand. That's going to give them a, a decent idea of how big it is. Most of our hands are at least close to the same size. Um, and then you want to do it with a more precise unit of measure, like a ruler. You could always do what I did today and cheat. Just take it with an ugly ruler that you've got laying around the house, size up that ugly ruler next to one of the pretty ones that uh, Canva has, and then you know you can always put the actual size right next to it. But that little visual is going to help them to you know more accurately picture how big it is, especially if you've ever gotten that review where people say things like, Oh, this is smaller than I imagined it. And your size is right in your listing. Yeah. It's very frustrating. Let you defend yourself a little bit. Exactly. Um, an email list or a discount code, if you've got an email list or a way that they can follow you, even a social media link would be okay. Care instructions. That's one that didn't really apply to this because it doesn't need any. But if it's jewelry, you might want to tell them how to take care of it. If it is a candle, you might want to tell them the either the safety warning or how to clip the wicks. Um, if it is something that needs to be polished with a special wood polish, you might want to let them know that. Um, shipping times, how long it's going to take, how you package it. If it is something glass, like a mug, maybe letting them know that they're packaged with care, but if there's any issues that you'll replace them, that's something important as well. If you have some type of replacement policy, um, just so they know right from the photos that if they order and it arrives broken, not to run and leave you a bad review, just let you know, and you'll take care of it for them. And then obviously your listing video, I counted that in our 10 photos, um, but it, it would technically be like the 11th photo slot. You've got that added bonus. 
Listing videos are so easy to do. There's no reason not to, and they do help convert because that listing video is showing you a mostly unedited view of that product. I don't know about you, but when I shop on Amazon and on Etsy, if I'm looking at a product, I look at the listing photos, but I spend a lot more time looking at the photos that people have posted in yeah, the reviews. I do too. That's the first thing I look yeah. at. Like I really look at the listing or at the review photos because I know that the listing photos are going to look nice. They're, they made them look as good as it possibly could. It's like when you go to McDonald's and you see the burger on the sign yep. that is so beautiful. And then you go through the line and you receive it and it's like, you know, it's like a fart on a bun. Um, it, it's never going to like a fart on a bun. Yeah, it's never, that. it's never going to look that nice because the people who do the food photography, they're like sticking styrofoam in it and spritzing it with a spray bottle and everything else. Yeah. Um, but when you see the, the photos that people are leaving in the, uh, reviews, it's, it's different and it's harder to fake something in a video that you post. So they're going to watch that video. And then something fun and silly. If you want to do something, you know, if you've got a, a product and you can add a fun background, if you can do, um, for example, with this one, I did the photo that says like, never dies. Perfect never for the, die. perfect for the person who kills plants. It'll never die. That You know? Sure. Yeah. I mean, obviously if you sell like, I don't know, earn necklaces for grandma's ashes, don't do something fun and silly. Um, but, I mean, unless you want to, I mean, no. I, guess, I guess it depends if you're selling silly products for that, but it just, you know, make sure that it fits your brand, but something fun, something silly, because that helps your brand personality shine through a little bit as well. So guys, this has been, uh, uh, more than 10 different ideas for your listing photos. It's been a lot. Go ahead and get your questions in. Yeah. And let me know if you like this format of videos where I'm actually doing everything for you live. I know that they last a little longer. They take us a little longer because I have to actually think and spend time thinking. Um, but it's I don't hard to think. Well, I don't think it would be as fun if I just had everything already done I for them. I agree. I agree. Like letting them watch me fumble, I feel like is more educational than I do than if I had it all figured out. But if you want me to do them all figured out and ready, feel free to let me know and I'll just start prepping things ahead of time. But I thought it would be fun to do it live. So did we have any questions? Uh, other Let's than see. Linda had asked a question earlier. She, I'll get to it because she asked if you can hear. No, there are no sounds on Etsy video. No. Uh, if you had info to photos, would you remove that information from the listing? No, no, both places, both places, no matter where you put it, everybody's going to miss it. C Y O. Uh, I have a ruler in my picture and constantly get the bigger than expected comment. Me too. Um, oh, oh, with his, and Johnny, I know what you sell. Are you sure that that's, that's not a compliment? Johnny sells phallic items. Phallic items. They be bigger than expected. That's great. That's a good compliment for yeah, your products, was... Johnny. What else we got? Uh, I heard not to add social media or emails to distract them from purchasing. No. So that is coming from somebody who's paranoid that their product isn't going to be good enough that they're going to come back to it. Here's the thing. If somebody likes you enough that they're leaving your Etsy shop because of the picture to go join your email list or to whatever, whatever you have the link sending them to, they're committed to you and they're committed to the product. Right. They're not going to go join the email list and be like, OK, I'm not buying it now. That's not. Yeah, that's 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 paranoia yeah, is the, what that is. And the email list. The thing is, your email list, if you're doing an automatic discount code, what that is saying is the moment that you sign up for this, you can come back to this listing and get it for cheaper. If someone has already got the intent to buy and they find out that they can take the item that's already in their cart and get a discount for it, they are going to opt in for that discount. And then you forever have them on your email list. That way, if your Etsy shop gets shut down, you have all of those contacts, your most loyal followers, customers, people with intent to buy, all captured on a list. That way, if you need to open up your own website, if you need to sell somewhere else, you have the ability to notify them. So I, yeah, that's, that is, um, that is somebody who thinks they know what they're talking about, but doesn't. And yes, they're paranoid that your product isn't going to hold up to the standard that you're holding it to. Uh, Earth, Moon, Star said, any tips for art other than just a picture of hanging it up? So when it comes to any product and oh, how can I photograph this? How can I do like go and look at what your competitors are doing? Go and look, go and look at what some of your top end competitors are doing and emulate it. I mean, 
everyone in your industry is going to have the same problem that you have coming up with ideas. And a lot of them will have had those ideas. And if you find a couple that only use two or three pictures, chances are they're going to be doing different things. So just pull in what they can. And this applies to every product because there's several people saying, I sell this. What, what can I do for this? It applies for that. Go, go find your competitors and see what style of photos they're doing. Pick which ones you like and emulate what they're doing. Yeah. Can you hop over to um, pop, pop the link open and just go to explorethechannel.com. I have posters. And I want to see what I did for my posters. Go ahead and screen share. Hey guys, my book is available now. Obviously, this is my website for my book, but for my posters, do this. Oh, where are the photos? Why are they not showing? Refresh. Stop it and refresh. The page isn't loading. Hit the X and then refresh. Oh. Why aren't they loading? That's fine. I got it. Grab a different one. That none of them are going to load. Why aren't they? That's why I said give me the mouse. Okay. We'll switch it back to us. Yeah. I have a bunch of different print ideas and I'm not working. See if they work over there. If they don't work in this, then it's your website. It'll be in shop. But anyway, um, so. It's your website. Well, that's a thing to fix tonight. Um, but for my posters that I offer for my book, I have one of the poster hanging, but at a slight angle because prints, it's kind of hard to see. Um, I have it just tilted at a little bit of an angle so that you're able to see it, you know, as a 3D object rather than just as a, you know, a, a, a picture. Um, you can do how it comes packaged. In mine, I have it in like the tube that it comes packaged in. I show the, the tube itself. Um, you can do it in different frames. Just make sure that you tell them that the frames are not included. Um, you can do it styled in different sizes. If you offer that print in multiple sizes, stick it in a couple different mock-up living rooms. Do a couple different um, you know types of homes and styles of homes. That way they have the ability to use their imagination. Don't worry about it, it's fine. Um, don't, don't worry about it. Um, but I really like that 3d element, which I mean, go ahead and screen share real quick and you can see it in this one. See how it's kind of tilted with the clips on it. This is the, the mock-up from, I think I use, I use printify for my website. I use printful for after, uh, alpha, alpha dapt. But notice how it's just got that little bit of tilt. There's that little bit of fold. There's a little bit of shadow and it's got these little clips. It just makes it look a little bit more 3D. Whereas if it was just, you know, straightforward, you wouldn't be able to tell. Is it a blanket? Is it a postcard? Is it? is it, you know, it, it would be hard to figure it out. Um, and then you can kind of see if you... You need to fix your footer too. If you just hover over, I know. Your funny. footer is like locking to the bottom of the sail instead of locking to the bottom of the page. I'll go fix it. It's weird. But I also have the tubes that they come in. Tubes. I wonder if Quick View will show the photos. Nope. nope. Darn it. But it just gives you a, a, an idea of, you know, what you can do there. Okay, go ahead and switch. Let's do it. By the way, guys, my book is available now. It is. It's really good. Somebody earlier said that they had to put it down to watch the live stream. Really? Mm -hmm. The channel by Starla Moore. Go buy it. It's fun. Just released last Friday. For those who ordered a hardback, we're still trying to figure out what's going on there. If you want to order a hardback, I would recommend not doing it from Amazon. It's all independent booksellers who are selling it right now. For but way more than what it's, it actually costs. My, so we're getting scalped already. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you can get it uh, through Barnes & Noble if you want the hardback. I would recommend Barnes & Noble. Paperback is fine on Amazon. You can get it with Prime. You could have it this weekend. Uh-huh. What is the best photo to put as the thumbnail or main slash thumbnail for a listing, a basic overall pick of the item or a more lifestyle pick? I think it depends on the product. Really. Well, in, in most cases, I would recommend a basic, just overall, plain Jane photo of the product. However, look at what your competitors are doing. Type in a couple keywords related to your product and look at the search page. You want to look at that first page and see how everybody else's product photos are styled. Um, if... You know, if everybody else, if you're selling this succulent and everybody else who's selling similar succulents have them all on shelves with little candles and things around them, and yours is just your succulent all by itself, yours might look a little plain in comparison. So in most cases, go for the more simple thing for the first photo. 
unless all of your competitors are who are actually making sales, not competitors who are doing poo-poo, but your competitors who are doing well. If they have well-styled lifestyle photos, then take a lesson from them because it's going to mm-hmm. change depending on industry. Do you need to put all 10 photos? I kind of went into this earlier, but why wouldn't you? Yeah, that's... I mean, you're trying to do everything that you can to get someone to buy a product. Let's... let's uh, Anything having to do with earning more money. Let's say, let's say you're going for getting a raise at work and they want you to submit a performance review with 10 bulleted points on why you deserve... It's not required that you fill in all 10 slots, but filling in all 10 slots is a higher, it could lead to a higher chance of you getting that promotion. It's the same thing with selling a product. Why not? Why not use everything that they give you to, I mean, everybody has a different preference when they go to buy something, right? Somebody's going to want to look and see every different image. They're going to want all the different stuff. It's not going to matter to everyone. It might not matter to 99% of your customers, but if that's one extra sale because you took five minutes of extra work to slap it on your listing, then why not do it? Where's our logo? Our logo isn't on the screen. Um, It's the buried treasure principle. There it is. It's the buried treasure principle. It's um, if you knew right now at this very moment that there is buried treasure in your backyard, how much time, money, and effort would you spend trying to find it? How many holes would you dig? If it were guaranteed right now that there was buried treasure in your backyard, how many holes would you dig? Yep. You would dig as many as it took until you found that buried treasure, right? It's the same thing. If you knew that, you know, you had, you were entering the lottery and you could buy 10 lottery tickets, would you scratch off all 10 of them? Yeah. Those are all opportunities. It could be that one crazy photo that you thought was ugly that you added to your listing that convinces one guy to to buy your product. It's you never it. know. Put in the extra five minutes. Yeah. And, and is it required? No. No, That's absolutely. Easy. They don't require you to anything. You could have a totally blank shop with no descriptions, no shop information or anything, just one image and a price. But it, your chances are going to be a lot less than if you had all your stuff filled out. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what is your recommended parameters for the listings? I noticed your guys' weren't one by one. No, uh, square is not going to... The listings don't display as squares. And I always get really confused when people use squares. Now, there was a time a couple months, years? It's like a year and a half ago, I think, when Etsy experimented it with uh, square images. They don't any. You need to use all of the space that they provide. A square image is just going to be cropped into a, a rectangle when you're actually within your listing can you go into canva and see what the what the dimensions of that listing photo are it should say right at the top on the tab on the tab yeah tab on the tab the browser tab mr moore i swear to god 2006 by 1594 can you type that in the chat that is the exact size at your Etsy listing photo. I wasn't sure what the hell you were talking about. In the tab. The tab. You guys know that episode of Spongebob? The lid. The, the lid. Spongebob's telling Patrick to put his hand on the lid. And that's, Patrick... I don't, that's huge, honey. That's... 2006 by 1594? That's like 2.5K. That's they'll scale, huge. They'll scale down. Okay. You can, yeah, they'll, right. they'll scale down and that'll right. ensure that it is the quispiest. You're always right. You're right. It's the quispiest. You're right. You're right. But if you want to type that into Canva, um, you can go here. Let me uh, let me show them one more thing. We are fit to fight. Let me show them one more thing. One more thing. Oop, wait to screen share until you're ready. Yeah, you're fine. You can click create a design and you can do custom size mm-hmm. and you can type in the size that you need for it. So, OK. OK, back to questions. Yeah. What's a discount, decent discount for a new buyer? Depends on what you sell. Yeah, it completely depends. A discount, I mean, it, a discount should never hurt you. If the discount is so steep that it's hurting you, you either need to offer less of a discount or raise your prices. In most cases, I recommend raising your prices so that they're in the top 10% of your industry. That means that you look at who's at the very tippy tippy top of your, your industry. You look at your biggest competitors, the ones who are making sales, and you align your prices right beside them. Um, And if you look at your photos and you're like, oh, I'm not really measuring up to them, you improve your photos. If you look at your packaging and you say, oh, mine's not as good as them, you make sure that yours is. Um, Etsy isn't the everybody goes for the cheapest product type of platform. Uh, So don't 
be afraid to increase those prices in order to really accommodate a discount. Andrea said, please don't make 10 photos all the same. I hate when I look at the posting and the seller just shows the front with a slide. Oh, yeah. Yeah, don't do not do that. I, d I don't like that either. No, don't do that. You need to change things up. Get get creative with your angles and your positions and your backgrounds. You can sit back and think, am I being lazy? The answer is almost always yes. <laughs> okay, the, it's the good enough mindset. Yeah. If you say- this There is, is no such thing as good enough when you're trying to make money. Exactly. Always to be better. Absolutely. Uh, do you use the product in those photos or make a new image? Awesome. Oh, you mean the ones with the text? Um, it's it's up to you. You can kind of put your product in the background. You could like blur it. You could have it faded in the background if you wanted to. But a lot of people just put their branding, and that's fine too. It really doesn't matter. Ooh, I like Jennifer. She said, when I buy art, I like to see close-ups of the paper used, front and back, side, etc. Uh, then painting on it and sides are important to me if they aren't going to be framed. That's that's a good point, Jennifer. I just bought an art print and I was feeling the same way, not knowing what the texture would be. Mm. In re-gift boxes, re -gift boxes, I noticed packaging pre-packaged items being sold with a shop's handmade item. Is this acceptable to Etsy? No. No. Um, that so you have to either have made the item or it needs to be something that is essential for your item or a tool for your item. So, for example, um, I believe that if you sell candles, you could sell a wick cutter because that is a tool for the candle and it's kind of essential. Um, if you sell necklaces but you want to offer like a gold chain obviously you didn't make the chain but if you want to have that as like an upsell you can get it you know you can get just the pendant on a normal chain or you can pay twenty dollars more for a for a gold chain um you can have that as well um but it has to be a tool or something essential for your item unless it's like a plant i think that that would be different if you're like selling a plant and it's coming in like a like if the plant is the wow. man. Yeah. I think that, sure. yeah, that, that's one of those things where just be careful um, because Etsy does have, if you look in their seller handbook, they do have some examples and guidelines, but not every single case is going to fit perfectly into what they've stated. Mm. All else fails. Try emailing them and ask. Love the artwork of the posters. Did you do that yourself? I didn't. That is, um, the artist's name is Sojo Chan. And I just, uh, I just shouted him out on my Instagram at explore the channel. If you look for the picture, I just uploaded a Vivian, his artwork, um, his Instagram is linked to that, but he is very expensive, but super duper good. He was, he was amazing. And he worked with me for months getting those, um, commissions done. What about using quotes from before copyright Aesop's fables, for example, is it okay to use a quote as long as you give them credit? So that is. Quotes in the public domain are fine to use. I would I would still Google copyright because random people like through lineage will like buy copyright for things that somebody in their family said a long time ago. Yeah, Most can, things like fables like that, super old, you're probably fine, but I would can, still Google it. Yeah, you can Google specific quotes, especially if they're really, really famous and say is blah, 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 copyright. Um, In most cases, it's it, not. It, yeah. Usually. It, it, with old, you know, and, and, um, like old Chinese proverbs and things like that are, are fine because they're so old that, yeah. She just got to get it out of the crown paper quote, gold rush. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I like that. That's great. That is a great quote. I sell wooden flags with three options. Is it better to make a separate listing for each option or keep one listing and use the ease of drop downs for customers? Depends on how similar they are. Um, we actually have a video called Reeling in the Etsy Customers from last summer, I believe. It's it's pretty old. Just uh, there, the thumbnail is of me fishing. I'm holding like a fish on a fishing line. And I talk about the difference in putting one listing out in the world with a lot of variations versus listing them all separately. If I was selling this and I had it in multiple colors, 
Um, the more listings I have in my shop, it's like the more fishing lines that are out in the water. Those are more keyword opportunities. It's more opportunities to use a variety of keywords and, you know, more fishing lines is better. You're going to increase the odds that you're going to catch a fish if you've got more fishing lines out in the water versus one. However, uh, if you have 6,000 listings in your shop, um, it's a little bit more unlikely that people are going to sit and scroll through everything that you have. So there are pros and cons to both. I recommend watching that video because I go over everything that you would need to know in it. Um, if somebody knows the title of that video offhand, could you by chance paste it in? Can I add a stamp or embellishments to a fabric pouch and sell it? Um, um did you, I mean, are you just buying a pouch and then embellishing it? I mean, I, I don't I, know off the top of my head. That sounds, because you're doing something to it. You're altering it. You're doing something to it. Um, Probably depends on whether or not it's like a, a brand, like a, like an actual branded thing. Yeah. Like are the pouches intended to be customized and sold or are you buying something from like Prada and sticking a thing on the side? Yeah. Cause you can't do that. You can't, um, a lot of brands like the, the people who like, um, custom painted like shoes, like Nikes and, and vans and things. They usually have to work directly with the companies. So that's not hard to do though. Yeah. They're starting to get in trouble. Are they? Mm -hmm. Um, so I think it would just depend on how much you're customizing it and how much of the original brand, if you're exactly, um, I don't feel comfortable giving you guys solid answers on things that could get your shop shut down. So just be careful, do your research when all else fails, email Etsy. Those are like my three, three things to live by. I, I make a kippa and bought beautiful pouches it's like a jewelry bag oh to keep it in okay okay i'm, I'm still not i think it's still just i mean is it included is it just or do they have to pay extra if it's just included you can just say like free gift pouch to put it in you know um so I think, like I said, it would just depend. But uh, guys, we're down to the last few minutes. If you have any last minute questions, feel free to get those in the chat. Otherwise, get I've got... there. They do not have to be related to the topic at hand. Yes. A uh, couple quick things before we get offline. Make sure that you watch last Tuesday's video. It's huge. I talk about four pieces of data. Four, four pieces, baby. Four. Four. Four whole pieces of data. Four whole pieces of data. Four pieces of data. It's been a long morning. Um, mm -hmm. that we have been able to acquire through E-Rank. Uh, through E-Rank, we conducted a survey of people who were in the process of shopping on Etsy. They got like a little pop-up that came up and asked them some questions. And it, they were in that buying mood and they gave us some really valuable insights. So the very first video that I've made on this information that we've collected has posted. And it talks about four things that Etsy sellers have said are most important to them and that would lead them to come back to make a second purchase from a shop that they've bought from. So I give some really actionable steps in that. Be sure to go watch it. Uh, this upcoming week, we're going to be doing another video. I don't know if it's going to post on Tuesday, but it will post sometime this week with more of this cool survey data. Uh, marketing calendars that everybody keeps talking about in the chat, those are down below. They're free. Not in the chat, the description. Down in the description. We're on it today, guys. So tired. Down in the description, you can get the uh, PDF that will put you on my email list. I promise I don't bug you. I hardly ever email you, except to tell you when we're going to be live and when we have new videos posted, especially with this new survey data, mm -hmm. because this is like nobody else has this data. It's just me and Pam Duffy. It's We're the only ones in the world. So it. We, I want to make sure. Data. Yeah, you wanna, really should go check it out. I want to make sure that you guys are getting this before, because some other, you know, some other Etsy YouTuber is going to rip off our video and be like, it's going to oh, happen. I found this cool thing and never. We're literally the only people in the world that have it. Exactly. There is no one else that can have this data. So <laughs> unless they steal it from us, unless they literally steal it. Yeah, that, it's it's not something that like we bought <laughs> off of somebody and it like, no, it's ours. Yeah. And then the, our data. And the last thing, guys, is that I wrote a book and it's available now. It's called The Channel. Uh, if you're getting the hardback copy, I don't recommend ordering it from Amazon. We're having trouble. It is listed on Amazon, but not by me. It's listed by independent, uh, independent booksellers. But you can get it from me through barnesandnoble.com if you live in the U.S., I believe. I believe you have to be in the U.S. for Barnes & Noble. Uh, but paperback, you can get through Amazon Prime. You can also get it through Barnes & Noble. You can get it on uh, Kindle and Nook as well if you prefer ebooks. 
Um, and if you want to check out my web store, you can go to explorethechannel.com. Mm -hmm. The book is appropriate for ages 16 plus due to cursing and violence. And a little bit of romance. Just, 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 just the tiniest just, little smidgen. Just the tiniest little smidgen. Okay. It's all sci-fi, though. It's all sci-fi. I feel like my photos are a bit of a mess. I try to show my dollies on different backgrounds, dark and light, wood and white, so they can get an idea of what it might look like on their furniture. Yeah, I get that. It's okay. That's, that's, I would say cohesiveness is, is much more important to me, though. I really like a nice cohesive background, a nice cohesive aesthetic. Now that the holidays are over, I'm thinking of selling overseas again. Can you guys let me know if you've had any issues with tariff codes? Yeah, there's. I haven't seen any issues. I know yeah, that in the I'm, U.S. I mean, we still we don't have to do that, do we? Yeah, we. I mean, we do have to have tariff codes for for shipping. I just had to have tariff codes to ship one of my books to, really? uh, to Canada. Yeah. That's um, so silly. Yeah. So uh, tariff codes. I haven't heard anything. The best place to see if there's any delays for for specific countries would be to post in the Handmade Alpha Facebook community. Um, I know that UK shipping is one that's been a little bit slow. Um, there are the always slow countries. Like if you're shipping from the U.S. to Russia, it's always going to be insanely slow. If you're shipping from the U.S. to Italy, it's always going to be insanely slow. Um, it just depends on where you're shipping to. But in terms of like n largely broadcasted delays. Not a lot right now. No, it hasn't been too bad. Australia should be getting better with their delays as far as i know you forgot about australia being delayed i'm not sure how they're doing let us know not sure last i saw i don't i don't know the validity of it but apparently they're just gonna let like covid do its thing like they're just i don't know i don't know how valid that is but that's let's awesome. know if you're in australia how you're shipping yeah, how's that how's that how's that going over there let us know uh what is the name of that video just go to the channel and it's the last video that was on yeah not it, this one but the one before yep it it has me and it says something like make more etsy sales yes we are <laughs> Guys, you'll have to excuse me for doing really clickbaity thumbnails. It is the only way to get used to it. It's the only way to get people to look at my videos. It's happening. Uh, just like how I talk about making sure that your Etsy listing photo is the best one in the feed. All of my YouTube competitors have super clickbaity thumbnails. And if I don't do it, then we no, gotta compete, yeah. we got to compete. So I love you guys. Um, I will always email you. And the tell content you in the videos won't get clickbaity or cringy like a lot of YouTubers do, where it's like jumpy and bouncy all over the place. It's, we're, it's, we're not going to do that. But the thumbnails and names are probably going to be pretty clickbaity. So just be aware. Yeah, I try to make the, the title of the video at least like tell you what it's going to be about. Um, and I email you and let you know what's going to be in the video if you're on my email list. That way, if you don't want to watch it, you don't have to. But wanted to say thank you. I have fantastic Christmas sales. Huh? Awesome. Yes. And I believe your advice and tips was the reason. Nah, you still had to put in the work. Yeah, absolutely. Credit, your, credit yourself. We're we're glad we could help you, but you put in the work. Same with HAA. That's why we don't guarantee success with guarantee. our course. We don't guarantee we don't guarantee success with our course because at the end of the day, it's still entirely up to you to put in the work and the effort. I'm re-recording HAA right now, by the we way. We are. She's how far are you scripted? You're scripted through like module two now, right? Two and a half. Two and a half. Got you. Or no, I'm sorry, one, one and a half. Not two one and a half. One and a half. <laughs> one and a half of nine. Shipping to the Middle East is tough. Super low success rate for me. It was the same with us with her with her jewelry business. We we actually stopped shipping to Pakistan and I wasn't I don't think we were allowed to ship to Pakistan. We did. We had two packages we shipped to Pakistan and they both got sent back because to Because we were shipping from an Air Force base. I'm sure that that looks really yes. sketch. I mean, same technically with... Pakistan's an ally. So. Well, I... either way, we didn't ship to Pakistan because they literally always got sent back to us. Same with Russia though. Yeah, Russia. Russia always got sent back that to one us. That did a world route, world tour. Yeah, you know, you know, on like Bugs Bunny cartoons, when it would show like a suitcase that went around the world, and it would have all those stickers all over yeah, it. Yeah, we had a package literally do that. It had like fifteen like country stickers stacked on top of it as it made its trip back to us. It took like a year and a half. Yeah, it took like a year and a half to get sent back to us, and it had stamps and crap. Just it had been stepped on. There were like boot prints on. It. <laughs> like it had had a rough trip, but it made it home, guys. It did. Uh, no tariff code problem. I did have orders placed, then shipping was closed to their country before I could ship it. Oh. That sucks. At least you were able to talk to them before you shipped and let them know. Is Australia still backed up for shipping? We've been waiting for a shipment since early November. Oh. Didn't realize it was coming from the Aussies. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what's going on over there. Post in the Handmade Alpha Facebook community. Links down below. Uh, you guys can can join and hang out with us in the group. And talk to, we've got like 10,000 alphas yeah. now, I think. There's quite a few alphas in there. And we hit 23,000, 23, right? 23,000 subs. 23,100 now. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, 
thanks for hanging out. Um, thanks for, for spending time with us. Thanks for being patient as I, out. as I got these weird listing photos up. I hope that you enjoyed this live demonstration. Did they say that they liked it? The live? Like, yeah, you... a lot of people said that they enjoyed it. Yeah, a lot of people. It's hard to, it's, it's hard to do, but. Nobody was like, nah, this sucks. This sucks. Don't, don't do this again. Don't do it. <laughs> um, go watch the video that I posted earlier this week. Uh, I'm wearing the exact same sweater in it. So that's fun. That that is fun. Yeah, she doesn't change. She I never change the same clothes. I never one outfit a week. I never change my clothes. One outfit per week. We love you guys. Sorry, it was a little bit more low energy. We're both very tired. Let's go get some Starbucks. Uh, uh, no, no, I'm going because I'm going to the gym. I don't want that. I don't want Aww. that. Yeah, Starbucks. No Bye. Starbucks. We love you guys. Uh, should have another video out next Tuesday. No, no promise. promise, no promises, but we're going to attempt to get another one out with more of the data that we have. It's a matter of breaking it down and scripting it out for you guys. Um, again, I would really highly suggest going and checking out the last one. It is good information. We're not doing that for the views. We don't make enough money for it to matter anyway. <laughs> like, so, Monetization. But, but go check out. Go check out the data. It is information that you won't get anywhere else. So really actionable steps. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the thumbs up if you haven't done that already. Click the I, I like the love shows you a realistic listing. Click the bell icon. Click the bell icon if you want to get notified when we go live. If you have the YouTube app on your phone, you do have to have the YouTube app on your phone to get that notification. And leave a comment. Let us know what your favorite part was. And earthquake. And we will see you guys next week. Bye. <laughs>